everyone. <clears throat> I, like a lot of others, had a chance to be at home last week. Won't surprise you to know that everybody's concerned about inflation, food prices, gas prices. And without exception, every employer I ran into, whether it was a large business or a small business, was having difficulty getting people to come back to work. A real uh, dilemma. And I think all of that is a result of the uh, $2 trillion uh, the other guys dumped on the economy last week over against the advice. Last month, the government reported America's employers added 428,000 jobs in April, leaving unemployment rate at 3.6% just above the lowest level in half a century. Hiring gains have also been consistent in the face of the worst inflation in four decades, with employers adding at least 400,000 jobs for 12 straight months. The government's May jobs report will be released tomorrow, with many expecting that 400,000 jobs added shriek to be broken. This week, a separate government employment report said that the number of job openings across the economy went a little bit lower in April, but remains much higher. A big update on changes to Social Security. SSI and SSDI. The U.S. Treasury Department just released a brand new statement in regards to whether millions of Social Security recipients will see a benefit increase or a $1,400 stimulus check. According to an updated report published by the government earlier today, the Social Security Trust Fund that most Americans rely on for their retirement will be able to continue to pay up benefits on a timely basis until 2034. That is one year later than the Treasury Department estimated last year. This improved analysis, signed by Treasury Secretary Jenny Ellen and Labor Secretary, projects that the government's disability insurance program will be able to pay full benefits over the next 75 years. This is the first time Social Security officials have issued such a, such a rosy outlook since their 1983 report. Last year's report estimated that the Disability Insurance Trust Fund would be, would be depleted in 2057. The department said that Medicare Part A will remain fully financed through 2028, two years later than previously expected. Yellen and Walsh expected and explained that the improved outlooks for the various funds are due to a faster and more robust economic recovery from the crisis. Two White House officials wrote, The main reasons for the small deficit are a stronger than expected recovery from the crisis-induced recession, higher expected levels of labor productivity, and lower future de- and lower future disability incidence rates that reflect recent experience. The Treasury Department looks after two Social Security funds, the Old Age and Survivors Insurance and Disability Insurance Trust Funds. Two programs were created to provide a source of income to former workers who have retired at the end of their careers and to those who cannot work due to disability. According to the official statement by the government, changes were made to near-term economic data and assumptions reflecting that, they, that the recovery of employment, earnings, and GDP from the recession has been faster and stronger than projected in last year's report, resulting in higher payroll tax receipts and higher revenue from income taxation of Social Security benefits. Despite the revised projections and given broad demographic trends in an aging population, the financial outlook for Social Security is largely funded by payroll taxes. It's bad without government intervention or changes for the country's tax code. The various funds act as pillars, upholding the retirement plans of tens of millions of people, the most popular safety net programs in the U.S. If Congress fails to act by the time the main Social Security trust fund is depleted, federal law would automatically cut benefit checks for retirees by about 20% across the board. Many Americans also expected to receive checks totaling up to $4,200 this month. The average benefit has also increased by about $143 per month to around $1,800, with the maximum benefit increased by around $361. Larry Summers, uh, Jason Furman, and now the Secretary of the Treasury has basically admitted they made a mistake. That's hard to find in this town, so I commend her for uh, admitting they made a mistake, but it was a gargantuan mistake. With regard to the ongoing uh, issue about uh, violence, um, Senator Cornyn, as you know, is representing our side in discussions with Senator Murphy. We're hoping to actually get an outcome that will make a difference uh, in the areas of uh, mental health, school safety, and things that are related to the incidents that occurred in Texas and in Buffalo. In the Joe Biden economy, the American people have suffered through the most expensive Memorial Day ever. Gas prices today, on average, $4.92 a gallon. That's 30 cents higher a gallon than when we were here two weeks ago. And Joe Biden has an opportunity to try to make things differently for all of these people who are having to cancel summer plans, make changes in their life, but he's not doing it. 
Not at all. Tragically, he's refusing to take the steps needed to help the American people. He is so wedded to the climate extremists that he won't even mention the ideas of drilling for oil and gas in the United States. Instead, he wants to use the Defense Production Act. For what does he want to use it for? Not for pipelines, not for more oil and gas exploration, but for solar panels. Solar panels when the price of gas is, five, is approaching $5 a gallon. So today, Secretary Yellen was in the Finance Committee. She may have admitted a week or so ago that she had gotten it wrong. Today, she was back to the same blame game, blaming inflation on Putin and the pandemic. Families are paying $5,000 a year more this year than last year just to keep up with where they were a year ago. People don't believe the president. They believe their own two eyes and their empty wallets. And then last week, we had the Secretary of Transportation and the Secretary of Energy say, well, if you're not happy with high gas prices, buy an electric vehicle. $55,000, that's sure not working in Wyoming or anywhere across the country. These people are tone deaf, out of touch. But you know, there are Democrats who've wanted high gas prices for a long, long time. Joe Biden, when he was running for president, had said that he guaranteed you he would eliminate fossil fuels. And just last week, once again, this, bite, this president has come out siding with the environmental extremists and attacking oil and gas leases. He went after them in my home state of Wyoming, a number of western states. They've frozen 2,000 leases in Wyoming with their actions just last week. And these are leases that were granted in 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 2020. So the president has once again taken an ax to American, to American energy, as a result, is chopping into the paychecks of the American people. So when Joe Biden provide free tax filing services, end quote. So Secretary Yellen, it sounds like the free file uh, uh, has worked out great for corporations like Intuit, which raked in billions of dollars. But do you agree with the GAO that the current system is not working for American taxpayers? and that it's time for the IRS to develop a real free file program. Or let me just ask this more directly. If we can get you the resources, will you commit to developing a free file program that actually works for American taxpayers? So look, I absolutely agree with the comments that you made about free file. It hasn't worked. We need to develop a new system. There's no reason in the world that a modern economy shouldn't have a system that makes it easy um, for such a large group of taxpayers to file their return. 